Gus Hall, General Secretary of the Communist Party. In the past weeks, we have seen a flurry of activity about... Solidarity forever! Solidarity forever! Solidarity... Gus Hall. A hardliner communist, Hall was considered to be a side yaki, one of the most cursed outcomes for the United States of America. Yet, how truly bad actually is Hall? Is he just another tyrant? Or does he actually have good intentions? Well, we'll find out today, because we will witness America's slow descent into communism. And if anyone watching wants to try this, feel free to take this video as a guide as well to achieving Hall's proletariat revolution. So, with that being said, sit back, relax, and let us enjoy this wild ride with Gus Hall. So, starting off in 1962, we have Mr. Richard Nixon as our president, and we get this focus tree regarding our foreign affairs. The thing is, political power is very important in achieving Hall's wild ride. So, therefore, to save political power, we're actually going to do none of these focuses. And now we get class 3 Senate election season, and we're going to choose Fighting for You and Me help elect the MPP. And once again, we get some protests in Birmingham, and also a counter-protest in Birmingham. And the civil rights issue has deteriorated to the point where we have to make a choice between passing the Civil Rights Act or vetoing the Civil Rights Act. And since we want the MPP Center to come into power, we're going to crack down the movement and veto the Civil Rights Act. The civil rights issue seems to have no end in sight, our great president Nixon, however, has come up with a plan. Those goddamn liberals will learn to fall in line. And Nixon vetoes the Civil Rights Act. Many progressives, both Democrat and Republican, see this betrayal as the final straw. The back of the Republican Democrats has broken, and wolves among the MPP circle ever closer. And with the Civil Rights Act vetoed, MPP shifts in favor of the center. And here we also get the Guyanan crisis, and the Guyanese government has seized hundreds of critics and political agitators. Help Burnham to repeal the act, or else. And he refused the offer. Uh, the press will get over this in a few weeks, it's not that big of a deal. Bad news stick, we're not done with Burnham yet. How the man, call a meeting. And finally, how democracy dies. A meeting was called, and one conclusion was reached. This shall not stand, not on our watch. And here begins the Guyanan War, and once again, we're going to do absolutely nothing in Guyana. You know, Richard Nixon here isn't really that bothered about foreign policy. What can go wrong? And the class 3 Senate elections are out, where we see a huge increase in MPP Center, as well as MPP Far Right. The protesters march in circles around the White House, disparaging the president's recent decision to veto the Civil Rights Act. Couldn't those dumb kids see they were the reason he did it? He rolled his eyes and closed the curtains. And we also get Guyana and Goliath. Just another now in the coffin of the Nixon administration. And so the Guyana war is lost, further cementing MPP's place in America. And on top of that, some news are also leaking about Nixon's possible shady campaign methods. Like the files got out. I thought you had them locked away. Of course, I'll investigate the matter fully and try to prevent any further information leaks. And once again, Hitler is dead. The South African war breaks out and smash the dominoes. Goodbye, my darling. Hello, Kuruman. Now, the South African War is one of the first places where you can start to get extremist popularities and with any luck, we can reach around 10-12% to of MPPL and MPPY by the time we get public discontent with the war to apocalyptic. And using the political power we saved from not doing these foreign affair focuses, we can start doing these decisions to increase the public discontent with the war. And meanwhile, the 1964 presidential election season, as well as Senate election season, has also arrived. Help elect the MPP. And the Department of Justice also begins official investigations into Nixon. The situation on Capitol Hill is, to put it bluntly, sir, gloomy. In the Senate, you'll need 
34 votes to quit, you'll probably get 12, maybe 15 if you're lucky. Richard Nixon stared at the faces surrounding him in the East Room. He threw up two fee for victory signs, turned around and stepped onto Marine One and into history. And with that, Richard Nixon resigns, and Kennedy is now our president. Do you want a man for president who's seasoned through and through? And instantly after Kennedy came to power, Hard Hat Riot breaks out in New York. The whole debacle began when a group of college students decided to hold a demonstration in New York. Enough was enough. America must leave South Africa. I'm proud of you, you know? The circumstances aren't ideal, but I can think of no better man to be president right now. Think of all the things we can finally accomplish. I know you'll do great, Jack. I'll see you when you get back from the loss. And about that, I think we all know what's going to happen next. And yup, John F. Kennedy assassinated. If not us, then who? And now our president is John W. McCormack. And as McCormack, we're going to save Nixon's legacy. And here we also get the moratorium to end the war in South Africa. Over 500,000 people have marched on Washington to protest the violence and brutality of the South African war. All the windows of the White House are closed shut now. Extremism is spreading throughout the country like wildfire, demagogues and radicals spreading their lies and ideologies to everyone desperate or angry enough to listen to them. If the war doesn't end now, the United States as we know them will be no more. And from all these decisions we did, the public discontent with the war is high. Despite his best efforts, Robert F. Kennedy could not hold back his tears. John was killed because he was the president. He was only the president because of Nixon lying like a bitch and doing everything in his power to stop progress. I was loyal to the Republican Democrats also. But that ends today. The MPP Center head office was empty as Robert Kennedy entered. I want to join you because I feel that you represent the change that I believe in and the change that my brother believed in. Mr. Kennedy, how would you like to be president? And as a result, in the MPP election primaries, a clear winner emerged. Will RFK finally get the MPP into the White House? And as the 1964 elections keep closing in, we get the Republican Democrat primaries. Wallace Bennett can provide us stability. And meanwhile, the South African situation continues to deteriorate. Silence! What are you fucking doing? We are trying to push forward. Trying! You're trying! We are the United States of America. We don't fucking try, we win! I set an army against the corpse. The Germans have nothing. How could you lose? Do something, damn it. Do fucking something. Make them stop. I don't want to hear them. Make them stop. Make them stop. Now, the public discontent with the war is extremely high. And meanwhile, the presidential debate of 1964 has also started. Kennedy has a point. It's time to level the playing field. And finally, the class one Senate elections, as well as the election day, has come. Robert F. Kennedy has won the election. And the National Progressive Party also now controls the Senate. Questioning the dream. Left MPP is coming into light. Something is changing in America. The ideal of the American dream no longer holds the luster it once did, and anger is beginning to mount. And into the fire. When John W. McCormack traveled to the Senate to ask, plead, even beg for another extension of the war measures, political agitators from the Yaki and LMPP roamed the streets now that the police was entirely occupied. This is the end. And finally, the public discontent with the war has reached apocalyptic. The inauguration day. Good luck, Kennedy. You will need it. Third time's the charm. Let's see what this Kennedy can do. Now, the main goal we want to achieve as RFK is to pass the Civil Rights Act, uh, complete some of the most uh, radical decisions here, and finally, get assassinated. So now, we're going to start with the focus, the Kennedy presidency. 
and meanwhile since we have reached the maximum public discontent of with the war we can now start pushing in south africa now that i'm your president i may finally address the issues our nation faces today rampant inequality political instability but together we can move past them and now we get the choice between across the aisles and the party above all and we're going to choose across the aisles and cooperate with the republicans together the national progressive party and the republican democrats can present a united front on civil rights together we can do great things the only thing that will redeem mankind is cooperation and regarding the civil rights since the center mpp doesn't actually have a majority we're going to put the foot in the door the first drop close the loopholes some of the democrats and congress have sprung an amendment onto the war powers act the republicans are all that matters and the war powers act passes onto the next bill drafting the environmental protections act invite the democrats to the table a firmer hand on the environment this was a bad idea reject the amendment no means no this is our bill too and the environmental act passes as well and now the civil rights act is ready to go to the committee and we're going to do our most pressing issue the chance of a filibuster here is really too high johnson's plant went off without a hitch and the bill will be sent to the floor for a vote as soon as the civil rights act hit the senate floor everyone tensed up for the obvious inevitable filibuster the thing is that filibuster never came and finally after all of that we can do the civil rights act and sunrise in birmingham we did it all for you and now after the civil rights act has been signed we get three paths in our focus tree and the first branch we will go down is the far right which will deal with the prison system and the kkk and now the class 2 senate election season is here again and we're once again going to pick the mpp and meanwhile here we actually won in south africa as well nice the first and most glaring issue in america's justice system is our presence the time has come to draft our prison reform bill and to end the horrific injustice faced every day by america's convicts hold the middle line deal with it barry and now it's time to deal with the ku klux klan and um, and decapitate the hydra our ban on the KKK has been a pure, unmitigated disaster. We can only hope this doesn't turn ugly. And it does turn ugly. Needless to say, this is bad for us. Go water for Mon and their allies are screaming red face in Congress. And with that, we have completed the far right side of our focus tree. And that has significantly increased our chance of assassination. And next path we're going to go down is the far left of our focus tree hey and italy joins the ofn nice and here regarding redlining we're going to erase the invisible borders once and for all thank heavens for that racism suffering fright apparently a pair of black teenagers were refused service and asked to leave throw the book at him Oh, and meanwhile, the 1966 Senate elections are out, and the MPP Center has further increased the Senate majority. And the next thing we have to deal with regarding the left side of our focus tree is redrawing the school districts. We'll get there eventually, but not today. Discretion is the better part of valor. We can still recover from this, surely? And finally, we can complete the middle path of our focus tree and as we're completing the center path of the focus tree, this happened. Grief and horror stuck the American people today upon hearing that President Robert F. Kennedy and Vice President were both gunned down in cold blood outside the Ambassador Hotel. The line of succession then fell on J. Strom Vermont. Mr. Vermont is a focal opponent of civil rights and is considered one of the most extreme figures in the MPPs far right wing the kennedy curse has struck once more the inauguration of strong vermont death has taken two icons of progressivism and left in their place an arch segregationist as the leader of the free world as strong vermont our goal is to radicalize the center mpp to do that our ultimate goal is to complete this focus and repeal the civil rights act but before that can happen, 
we need to complete the greatest disaster first. In this dangerous time for America, there can be no more room for discord and selfish bickering within our ranks. This party will be more unified than it was ever before. The time had naturally come for President Vermont to choose his cabinet. Fulbright is the way to go. Bird will ensure security and continued stability. Long will appeal to the masses. And finally, the skewer from the left. More worryingly, some began to speak up in support of some of the most extreme factions within the left wing of the party. And the second decision we have to make as Vermont is dealing with President Kennedy's memorial. This is a waste, scrap both proposals and forget it. The streets were even hotter today. In the halls of the Senate, the most radical of President Kennedy's allies would meet to discuss the swing in public opinion. Perhaps it was simply need a new, fresher, fiercer face. Now, it's 1968, which means it's presidential season. And like the Yaki campaign, we want to elect Barry Goldwater, so we're going to keep America strong and free. And the final thing we need to do before repealing the Civil Rights Act is dealing with the judges. We can surely encourage some early retirement. This predicament has the potential to spiral out of control. One after the other, the judges announced their resignations. The left didn't even try to hold back, with one congressman having to be dragged from the hall outright accusing the president of treason. The last dominoes begin to fall. And finally, with all these preparations, we can complete. The center shall not hold. When it passed by the slimmest of margins in the Senate through the heavy-handed wrangling of Vermont's coalition of segregationist old guard, there was a brief hour of utter silence. In New York City, before a huge crowd of supporters, leftist organizer Gus Hall announced with utter bitterness the takeover of the MPP. Before him, the crowd roared with approval. Center, left and liberal voices joined together in one furious chorus. On that day in New York City, it would be said, the center MPP truly died. In its place rose the forces of the left, united and vengeful. A spectre is haunting America, the spectre of socialism. America may be about to enter a radical new era. And now in the Republican Democrat primaries, we're going to pick Barry Goldwater, National Progressive Primaries, MCS, the quiet woman from Maine is quiet no more. And on top of all of that, Martin Luther King Jr. is also assassinated. At the end, everyone sings we shall overcome, and everyone prays that they will. Someday. And the election day of 1968 has come. President-elect Goldwater. And Senate-wise, the National Progressive Party still holds a majority. And as you can see here, the far-left MPP has gained eight Senate seats. The Conservative Revolution for Liberty. Our goal with Barry Goldwater is simple. To make Gus Hall win. To do that, we're going to completely screw up as Barry Goldwater by implementing controversial economic policies, very, very controversial union busting policies, as well as failing to defeat extremism. And to do all of that, we'll start with this focus here, the greatest disaster. We're going to take both decisions here, and we're not going to go any further in this branch of a focus tree. Next up, we're going to choose the Goldwater Presidency, and meanwhile we're going to pull out of Africa, and we're going to pick a conservative cabinet. These are Democrats, I don't see a single Republican or rather anyone that isn't a conservative Mr. President. The people voted for a conservative government. Alright, and here we get three branches of our focus tree. So right now, we're going to deal with the labor unions. And now we unlock decisions on a war against the unions. Our goal is to get the consequences of this to get to apocalyptic, i.e. around 10 shady measures. To do that, we can complete these decisions, and focus-wise, we're also going to rush these focuses. Something that had to be done before these duplicitous vanguards of workers' rights swindle another hard-working American. And we also get charting course. And for the good of our country, the MPP must go. It's not like this will backfire, will it? 
And meanwhile, the 1970 Senate elections are here, and we're going to pick the MPP again. And with Exonerate the RDs completed, I'm actually going to stop doing this branch of the focus tree. So right now, we're going to start with the left side of the focus tree, and we're going to rely on doing these decisions to bring the consequences into apocalyptic. And seems like they found out. Who? We don't know. My boy says though. Do you know what Concrete's already calling this? The second Watergate, like I'm fucking Nixon come again. All that work, gone in just one leak. What a mess. Oh, and it seems like the oil crisis is happening. And so now we have a focus tree to deal with this oil crisis. Oh, and the 1970s Senate elections are also out. And it seems like Goldwater getting busted off his uh, union busting policies wasn't really that popular. The far left MPP now has 19 Senate seats. Alright, and now that we're done with dealing with the oil crisis, we can continue down the environmental focus tree. And the Clean Water Act and the Environmental Protection Agency is also rejected by Congress. And here we can also do America is no place for radicals. So we're going to take this decision and do absolutely nothing to trample collectivism. And now we are faced with two choices, either to target the Yaquis first, or alternatively, we can go and start the economic branch of the tree. I think I'm going to start on the Reaganomics first. Mr. President, if you keep going down this route with Reagan, you're going to destroy the economy and the party. I trust Don, he has the best interest of America at heart. And with that done, we can begin Goldwater's good idea economic reforms. And as a result of all these uh, quite unpopular policies, MPP Senator blasts Goldwater for cutting welfare. And for weeks, protests, rallies and demonstrations are also undertaken. The LMPP is expected to come out against the capitalist gravedigger, and even the supporters of Yaki's branch of MPP were more focused on the clearly Jewish conspiracy. And now that we've completed these focuses, we're not going to go any further in the economic tree. So right now, we're going to target the Yaquis. And here, the presidential election season, as well as the class 2 senate election season, has begun. Fighting for you and me, help elect the MPP. And here we get the 1972 National Progressive Primaries. That's how Workers of America unite. And Officer Tarrant stands with all. Rock Tarrant give his support to Gus Hall at the LMPP rally. This little dog barks too much. Strap a muscle on him. And we also get the 1972 Republican Democrat primaries. Oh, and we've also lost an Iran hair. Will we let them stop us? No. Will our cause suffer the work of traitors? No. Then rise up my comrades and let us sing the song of our struggle together. America beyond the Walnut Street Theater expect a presidential debate. They will instead be treated with a discordant yet genuine redemption of their international. All rise, ye prisoners of starvation. And finally, the class two Senate elections and the election day of 1972 has arrived. The Republican Democrat Party has received 221 electoral votes and the MPP has received 313. On top of that, the National Progressive Party has gained a huge majority in the Senate. It soon becomes clear who will soon be sitting in the White House for the next four years. President-elect Hall. The crowd and all their hundreds of thousands looks like a fever dream. My fellow Americans, citizens of the world, comrades. The crowd roars harder, almost drowning out the new president. The revolution, however tenuous, has come to America. We can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. And that's how we actually get uh, 100 days of content. And we're going to begin with the whole presidency. And right now, we can put down Dixie and attempt to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1963. 
our center the podium and the sea let out an air splitting roar. The unionist can only raise the axe high above his head before the people claimed his senses whole. And with that, we have passed the revolutionary civil rights legislation. The next thing we're going to try to do is to crush the fifth column. What can you tell me about Hoover and Holmes? Uh, they're the directors of FBI and CIA respectively. You could have just told me they're the most powerful men in America. Just get to work, I want this done as soon as you can. We've underestimated the amount of profiling needed, which is why I'm sending your boy some help. A little birdie told me Hoover has a lot of fish, so he's not just a fascist lapdog, eh? Not just, but a cross-dressing homophile too. I want this plastered on every tabloid in America by tomorrow, sundown. The Beltway Exposé disclosed the illicit affairs of several dozen federal officials, most notably J. Edgar Hoover, demanding the resignation and subsequent trial of Hoover and his associates. White House agencies announced that 127 employees have been discharged for undisclosed or confidential reasons. And now we can complete Race the Sicko. Clean Sweep has divided into two phases. Base 1 consists of leak distributed by our agents who sweep the beltway clean of the Rollins God. Hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, doesn't matter how many will lose their jobs. And now we can uncover our crimes and the infiltration. And finally, after the partial pacifications of the reactionary fifth column, we can begin to go down the long, rocky road to American socialism. William Martin's first and only impression of Langley was built by its par car park. Done sightseeing yet? With work to do, Martin, save the naval gazing for when that ugly bastard's turn to rubble. For better or for worse, it's fate like his. It's Gus Hall's to call. Silvers of doubt gnaw at the headman's conscience. And with that, ends our wild ride with Gus Hall. And with the Revolutionary Civil Rights Act passed and the FBI and CIA dismantled America's age of communism, has only just begun. So thank you all for watching this video. Going for these uh, extremist presidents are always a hard thing to do. So if you enjoyed this video and made it to this stage of the video, be sure to subscribe and like. And until the next time, God bless America and glory to Hall.